Hello guys and welcome to another Keystone Highlight. This is a video series that I've been doing for a little bit. We're actually over 10 videos into the series at this point. It aims to cover most of Path of Exile's Keystones, talk about the mechanics and interactions of those Keystones, and how they can fit into various builds. And if you want to keep up with all of the goings on on this channel, I've set up a new Discord server. You can find the link to join that server in the video description below. And of course, if you want to just check out the Keystone Highlight series, here's the playlist. And this Keystone Highlight is all about Divine Shield. And Divine Shield is a core passive tree Keystone which was added in patch 3.16. And it's located on the far left of the passive tree near the Templar start location. Allocating Divine Shield on the passive tree is currently the only way to obtain this Keystone. So Divine Shield has two modifiers cannot recover energy shield to above armor, and 3% of physical damage prevented from hits recently is regenerated as energy shield per second. So, this is a keystone which grants energy shield regeneration based on prevented physical damage, and it's only specific to hits. Let's take a look at the downside of the keystone first. Cannot recover energy shield to above armor. This stat compares your total armor value to your maximum energy shield. If the armor value is lower than your energy shield, then the maximum amount that you'll be able to recover your energy shield to will be the same amount as your total armor. So for example, if you had 8000 energy shield with 5000 armor, you'd only be able to recover energy shield up to 5000 out of 8000 maximum energy shield. This is also not limited to the regeneration from the keystone. No form of energy shield recovery will be able to bypass this modifier including regeneration, recharge, leech, or energy shield gain on hit or kill modifiers. As long as you have a higher total armor value than your maximum energy shield, you'll avoid divine shield's downside and be able to fully recover your energy shield. This downside is rarely going to be a problem for most builds that will make use of this keystone because these builds will likely use determination. Even without any other forms of armor scaling or gear pieces with armor, a level 20 determination alone already provides around 3000 armor. Then, even with just a few pieces of hybrid armor gear and some additional armor scaling on the passive tree, you should easily have enough armor to avoid the downside on a hybrid life and energy shield build. On a low life or chaos inoculation build where you may have much larger amounts of energy shield, you'll likely need to invest further into armor scaling to be able to use Divine Shield. If you're enjoying this series and the other content that I've been creating recently, please like, subscribe and ring the bell to be notified whenever I post a new video. And a big thank you to my current channel members. If you'd like to support the channel and join their ranks, click the join button below the video to find out more. On the topic of Divine Shield's downside, I should also mention a niche interaction which may be useful in very specific builds. If your armor is lower than your energy shield, then you'll only be able to recover up to that amount, and this means that any recovery that would normally be removed at full energy shield will not be removed at your maximum recoverable amount. Energy shield leech will therefore have an overleech effect where instances of energy shield leech are not removed and instead last their full duration because your energy shield never reaches full. This is a very niche interaction however, as it will be very rare that you have a build which has close total armor and maximum energy shield values to be able to potentially make use of this mechanic. Alright, so Divine Shield's downside is considerably less impactful on the large majority of builds that will want to use the Keystone. So what about its upside? 3% of physical damage prevented from hits recently is regenerated as energy shield per second. So this modifier provides recovery based on mitigated physical damage, and it only works for hits. It won't take into account prevented damage from things like bleeding. This modifier will compare the physical damage of a received hit with the actual physical damage taken after all mitigation steps have taken place. Then, 3% of the difference between these two values is regenerated as energy shield per second over the next 4 seconds. So for example, let's say a character has 10,000 armor and takes a hit of 2,000 physical damage. Armor provides 50% physical damage reduction. So 1,000 physical damage is prevented and the character takes 1,000 physical damage. Then, with Divine Shield, the character would regenerate 3% of the mitigated physical damage. 
so the character regenerates 30 energy shield per second over 4 seconds. However, one of the really important parts of Divine Shield is that the regenerated energy shield per second is based on all of the physical damage prevented from hits in the last 4 seconds. You can consider these as independent stacks of energy shield regeneration, which each last 4 seconds and begin when the hit of physical damage is prevented. So using the same example, the character now takes another hit of 2000 physical damage one second after the first hit. Again, 1000 physical damage is mitigated by armour and the character takes 1000 physical damage. The character now regenerates 60 energy shield per second and will continue to do so for the next 3 seconds until the first hit of prevented physical damage is no longer within the last 4 seconds, at which point they will be regenerating 30 energy shield per second again for a further 1 second. Importantly, the snapshot of calculated physical damage received from a hit that is used to calculate the total prevented physical damage is actually taken after any relevant damage taken as modifiers are applied, and therefore shifting damage to be taken as another type will not count as prevented physical damage, because this damage isn't being prevented, it's just being taken as another type. So using the same example again, Let's say that same character had the Lightning Coil Unique Body Armor equipped, and takes the same 2000 physical damage from a hit. Because of Lightning Coil's 50% of physical damage from hits taken as Lightning Damage modifier, 1000 of the physical damage from the hit is taken as Lightning Damage. The remaining 1000 physical damage is mitigated by the 10,000 armor which provides 66.6% .6 physical damage reduction. So 667 physical damage is mitigated and the character takes 333 physical damage. The character will then regenerate 20 energy shield per second for 4 seconds. The portion of damage shifted to lightning damage is not considered as prevented physical damage and is not included in Divine Shield's calculation. So what is included in Divine Shield's calculation? Well, anything that is considered as mitigation in the steps of receiving damage will be considered as prevented damage for the purpose of this keystone. This includes armour and additional physical damage reduction, any relevant damage taken modifiers which would apply to physical damage from hits, for example fortify, the reduced damage taken while leeching modifier on the Slayer's Brutal Fervor Ascendancy notable, the less damage taken on the Dead Eye's Wind Ward Ascendancy notable, and spell suppression, to name just a few. But it also includes damage avoidance modifiers like the one on Aspects of Stone, because these modifiers are considered as damage mitigation, even though all of the damage from the hit is avoided. And it will also include block, including raw block which prevents all of the damage from a hit, and block which only partially prevents the damage from hits, such as the use of the Glancing Blows Keystone. Reduced reflected physical damage will also count as prevented physical damage, which means that you can gain a large amount of regeneration in physical reflect maps as long as you're able to reduce enough of the reflected damage to stay alive. Importantly, the buff provided by Petrified Blood and the effect of the Progenesis Flask will not be included, as this is not prevented damage. This is also the case for Aegis skills, such as the physical Aegis skill granted by the Ghastly Theatre Unique Shield, and guard skills which absorb damage like Steel Skin. These abilities do not prevent damage, but instead they absorb a portion of the damage before it would impact a resource such as life, so these won't count towards prevented damage for the purpose of Divine Shield. The exception for guard skills however is Immortal Cool, as this guard skill provides a less damage taken modifier instead of absorbing damage, and this modifier will contribute towards the prevented physical damage for the purpose of the regeneration granted by Divine Shield. One important note about Divine Shield is that it cannot create negative regeneration, or degen, if the damage taken from a hit of physical damage is greater than the initial calculated hit damage, for example while under the effects of a modifier like Shock, which increases damage taken. One of the strongest use cases for Divine Shield right now is in a Bone Shatter build, as this ability hits the user for physical damage and grants a trauma buff each time it is used, and the self damage from the skill gets increased based on how many trauma stacks the user has. The most popular Bone Shatter builds are Juggernaut builds using the Untiring Ascendancy Notable which is very similar to the Divine Shield Keystone, only it grants life regeneration and instead has slightly different numbers. Some of these builds are also using Corrupted Soul, which provides extra maximum energy shield based on maximum life, and makes it so half of all of the damage you take bypasses energy shield, 
These builds can use this combination of mechanics along with the Divine Shield Keystone. And this means that any damage they take with the exception of Chaos Damage will be split evenly between Life and Energy Shield. And with huge amounts of armor along with endurance charges, Bone Shatter's self damage will be able to produce incredible amounts of regeneration for both life and energy shield, creating ridiculous amounts of sustain. It's not uncommon for these builds to be able to gain several thousands of life and energy shield regeneration per second from these modifiers. Overall, Divine Shield is a keystone which can provide an alternative source of recovery for Energy Shield, especially on builds which lack avoidance and struggle to buy enough time to allow Energy Shield to recharge. For a lot of builds on this side of the passive skill tree, this may be a worthy keystone to pick up for a single point if you're already parting past it and you have a decent amount of Energy Shield and ways to mitigate physical damage. It's going to be a great investment for any Bone Shatter build, even with a small amount of Energy Shield, but it's unlikely to be of much use for other builds with significantly low energy shield. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay tuned and stay safe.